We'll start a new part file. Now your screen might look slightly different than mine. If you look on the advanced tab, it may be here. Or if I go to tutorials, it could be in different locations, but I'm gonna click on part. And then I'm going to come up here to the front, top, and right side plane. And I'm going to right click on the front plane. And I'm going to select this tool in the upper left-hand corner called sketch. And then I'm going to draw a two-point corner rectangle and I'll put that above the origin so this red arrow is the origin I'll put that up above the origin about like that and then I'm going to hit escape to get out of the rectangle command and I'm going to move my mouse to this line and I'll hold, click on that line and I'll hold down the control key on the keyboard and I'll also select the origin and I want to put that line at the midpoint on the origin so I'll click and we see that it moves that down to the origin and I'm then going to dimension this line and I'm going to dimension that as three inches now I see my units are millimeters so I'm going to show you how to change your unit if desired now you may want to work in millimeters that's fine uh, I'm going to do 3 in for inches so notice that we can put in the units at any time and SolidWorks will automatically convert between inches and millimeters or between millimeters and inches for us. And so then I'm going to dimension this line from here to here. Now notice that this line is blue right here. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the dimension command. If I drag this line, notice it can be moved. So we want the geometry to all turn dark. That's one indication that it's fully defined and also at the bottom of the screen it will tell us whether it is underdefined or fully defined. I'm going to dimension a distance from here to here and I'm going to do that as half an inch. So I'll do 0.5 in. Now there are several ways that you could change the dimension style. There should be a box down here that you can set the units, in this case inch pounds second, as desired. I'm going to show you another way to do that. So that's the easy way. I'll show you a slightly different way, more complex, because I also want this text to be read from the bottom. So I'm going to go to options and I'm going to go to the document properties and I'm going to set my units to ANSI American National Standard Institute so you might have it on international standard in this case I'm going to put it on ANSI and then after setting my standard I will go to units and I'm going to set my units here to inch pound second now notice that the dimensions are read horizontally from the bottom of the page with the ANSI standard I'm going to make one more change to make this text height larger so that it's easier to see so I'll go back to options and I'll go to the document properties and I'll go to dimensions and I'll go to this font and I'm going to set that to 0.325 make that text a little bit bigger so that everybody can see this on their computer screen all right then I'm going to draw a second rectangle now I hesitate whether to do this second rectangle now or to do it later I think I'll go ahead and do it now I'm going to draw a rectangle above the previous rectangle about like that. Then this time I'm going to select this line. I'll hold down the control key and I'll select this line and I don't see a midpoint constraint here or over here when I select those two lines. So the first time we selected a line and we selected the origin which is a point. So this time we will select a point so I'll click on this point and then I will hold the control key down and I'll select this line and I can set that to make that to the midpoint. We see that it moves that to that location. Notice that these lines are blue and so they can drag anywhere actually they it isn't just anywhere that they drag they all drag symmetrically about that midpoint we'll dimension the distance across here and let's also make that 0.5 and I'm going to dimension from this line up to this line and we'll make that two inches all right I'm going to click on the confirmation corner here to close this and we leave sketch notice our dimensions disappear if we want to get our dimensions back again to edit them if we right click on sketch one and we select edit sketch we can go back and if we wanted to change this say to three inches notice if I increase that height it increases the sketch I'm going to put that back on two inches and I'll finish that sketch now I'm going to highlight that sketch so that over in the browser it's highlighted blue and I'm going to go to the features tab and I'm going to do an extrude boss base and then I'm going to select this region down in here as what I want to extrude and I'm going to 
bring this out say a distance of two inches let's make it three inches so I'll type in three for the distance and we'll click the OK button to accept that and so now we see this extrusion now notice there's a folder here that says bodies one we might name that with a new name and so you can either click on it twice slowly or hit F2 and then that will allow you to edit the name and I'm going to call this base I want to make that sketch visible again so I can extrude the top portion of this. So I'm going to click on this arrow right here to expand that feature and I see here is sketch one. I'm going to right click on sketch one and I see an eyeball here and if I click on it the, the tooltip says show. So I'm going to click on show and so now I can see that rectangle again. I will click on the sketch to highlight it. Now I'm going to not click on the sketch so if I don't select that sketch in advance and I do extrude it asks me to select that sketch. So it either asks me to create a new sketch or I can select this existing sketch and then I want to extrude this one but I want this to be two separate parts so I'm going to uncheck merge results so this is the most common mistake that beginners make is they forget to uncheck this merge result and so now if I look up here under my solid bodies I have two solid bodies if you left that on merge result there would only be one solid body if there's only one solid body there's no need for a welder so you better hope that McDonald's is hiring and I'm going to call this a wall I'm going to hit the F2 and I'm going to name this part wall so I have two solid bodies within a single part file and that's not normally the way that you would probably work you would probably have an individual part file for each individual part but because of the way that weldments work in SolidWorks you do those individual bodies within the single part file I don't need to see that sketch anymore so I'm going to right click on the sketch and I'll click on that eyeball again to hide that sketch I've done a few things right I'll go ahead and save this and I'm going to call this fillet weld. So you can zoom in and out on your object by turning the mouse wheel and it will zoom to wherever you have the cursor at. So put the cursor approximately where you want to zoom and then turn the mouse wheel. If you want to rotate the part, hold the wheel down. If you hold the mouse wheel down, you can rotate the part around. If you want to pan the part, if you hold the control key and the mouse wheel at the same time, you can pan the part up and down or left and right. I'm going to make a few changes to the screen. Now on my computer they already show and so you'll have to make these changes to yours. Notice there is a row of gray tabs along here. Right click on one of these tabs and go to tabs and check mark the weldment tab. Now I have already done that so my weldment tab is showing and then you'll see a weldments tab. Click on that weldments tab and you'll see your weldments tools. Now typically we may only put a cosmetic weld bead on our part. We don't put the physical weld bead when we're modeling oftentimes it's not really possible to get the kind of artwork that a welder would do when we're, we're modeling the parts but there are some tools in here that will let us do some simple weld and so I've put this fillet bead weld tool up here on my weldments tab already and this is different than this weld bead which does a cosmetic weld so I'm going to show you how to do that so we'll go to customize go to the commands and then go down to weldments and you will see this fillet bead tool. I dragged and dropped that up onto my weldment tab. Then I will select a fillet bead to place that weld bead. And first we're given an option to put in the size. I'm going to do 0.125 or whatever appropriate metric size that you want to use. And then it asks me to select a face set one. I'm going to select face set one as this face right here. So this face is common to the the weld bead on this side and the weld bead on the opposite side. So I'm going to select this face first and then for face set 2 I'm going to select this face and notice it previews that weld bead and I have a check mark to add a weld symbol. I'm going to say OK to that and so I put that weld bead on this side. Notice the weld symbol it's on the same side or the bottom of the arrow. I want to add a weld bead to the other side. So I could add and just do another weld bead or I could edit this one. So I'm going to right click and I'll select this tool right here for edit feature. So before we did an edit sketch, now we're in a feature. So I'll right click, I'll do edit feature and I'll come down here and make this box active. So whichever one of these boxes is that blue cyan color, that's the active box. So I'm going to come down here and make this my active box and I'm going to select face two on this face 
And so now notice it's going to do a weld bead on either side of the part. I'll say OK to that. Now it didn't update my symbol as I expected it to. I'm going to undo back to the beginning when I put that in and, and see if it does it if I do them together. So I'm going to do a weld bead for my face one. I'll select this face for face two. I'll select this face and this face at the same time. Actually I see down here why it didn't give it to me because I did it incorrectly. And so I'm going to control unselect this face. So I have only this face for face set two. And I'll go to other side and I will again set as face one so we could have put in the well bead on both sides we saw that we could do that to get the symbol right though for the other side symbol I will then do face set two and I'll select this face and I'll say okay to that and now we see the correct symbol so when you don't get results that you expect review what you've done and see if perhaps there is a way to get exactly the behavior that you expected. So that finishes this component. I'll save it. I'm going to do the same assembly now in Autodesk Inventor. And so I'll click on the page here it says new and I'm going to expand till I find the inch templates and I'm going to do a standard inch IPT. I'll do create. Then I'm going to expand this folder and we see an XZ or a YZ plane, an XZ plane, and an XY plane. So in SolidWorks these were named front, top, and, and side. I'm going to right click on this XY plane the same way we right clicked on the front plane in SolidWorks. So I'll right click and I'll select new sketch just like we did in SolidWorks. I see a two point rectangle and it could be underneath a set of tools. I'll do a two point rectangle and I'll click above the origin. This point is the origin the same way that we did in SolidWorks. Now I may want to turn on there's actually a projected point there and there's a center point here that's the origin underneath that. I may want to turn on the visibility of that. Um, I'll just leave it the way it is for now but in the future we may want to do that. In SolidWorks we did a midpoint between this line and this point so it's in Inventor the way we will do that is a coincident constraint which is essentially the same thing we did in SolidWorks. So I'll do coincident. I'll come down here. I'll find the midpoint of this line. I'll click at the origin and so we see that it moves down notice that it changed the color indicating that portion of that is constrained. I'll then do dimension and I'm going to dimension this line as 3 inches and I'll dimension this height as 0.5. Actually let me undo that for uh, just a moment. So notice the color of that geometry. If I drag it, it can this line can move and then once we change and put the dimension on here, it will turn to another color indicating that it is fully constrained. Now I'm going to change my background color to something a little closer to the SOLIDWORKS background. So you don't need to do this step. Yours will already be set probably at a different color. So I'll go to Tools and I'm going to go to Application Options. And on the Colors tab, I'm going to set a, say, a winter day background. I'm also going to make my text taller here just like I did in SOLIDWORKS to make it easier to see. So I'll go to my Application Options. I'll go to the General tab and I'm going to change that annotation scale make that a little bigger uh, so that the text height can be seen more easily. All right, at some point I, I left my sketch and so I need to right click and select edit sketch again. We saw the same thing in SolidWorks where we right click on the sketch to edit. I'll draw a rectangle above the first rectangle the way we did in SolidWorks and then for Inventor I'll do coincident. I'll select the midpoint of this line and I'll select the midpoint of this line. It moves those two together. I'll then do dimension. Notice the change in color of the lines as I go. This dimension 0.5 and then the dimension from here to here as 2 inches. And again if we want to change that, well let's just do this the same way we did in SOLIDWORKS. So I'll finish sketch but I want to get back and edit that sketch. So I'll right click and I'll select edit sketch and so now notice there's a check mark up here to finish sketch. In SOLIDWORKS there was a confirmation corner a check mark over here. If I wanted to change this to 3 inches I would double click on it and change that to whatever size I want. Alright, I'm going to finish sketch and I'll go to the 3D model tab and I'll do extrude. So that was the same function that we used in SolidWorks and I'm going to select that rectangle and I can drag this out. Now in Inventor to rotate around if you have to hold the shift mouse or the shift wheel. 
So shift wheel on the mouse, where in SolidWorks you just hold the wheel, in Inventor you do shift wheel. And I'm going to send that out a distance of three inches. We'll say okay to that. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'll call this fillet weld. Save your work often. And then in SolidWorks, we saw that we had to expand this node. So there was a little triangle in SolidWorks, a plus symbol in Inventor. We'll expand that, and I want to make that sketch visible again. So we'll right-click. In SolidWorks, there was a little eyeball. In Inventor, it's visibility. So it was show on the eyeball or hide in, Solid in Inventor, it's visibility. And I'll do extrude again. I'm going to select this rectangle. And again, we don't want to join these two together. If we join them together, a welder isn't needed. In this case we want to do a weldment so we'll tell it to create a new solid body so we see this symbol with the plus we'll do new solid and we'll say okay to that and now notice right now before I say okay it says solid bodies one when I say okay it now says solid bodies two to hide that sketch we right clicked on it in SolidWorks and Inventor will right click on it we'll turn off the visibility of that sketch to rename these solid bodies we expand the folder and we click twice slowly or hit F2 and I'm going to name the first body as base and then I'm going to name the second body as wall. Now there's a bit of a difference in philosophy in Inventor versus SolidWorks. Inventor typically you would model each one of these parts as a separate part and then put those into an assembly. In SolidWorks we do multi-bodies within one part just the way we did and then we have some weldment tools. In Inventor we have to go to an assembly and do it like the real world where we weld parts into an assembly. So I'm going to come up and click on the white sheet again and I will tell it I want to do a weldment ANSI standard IAM that it stands for inventor assembly and then I'll come up here to my assemble tab and I need to place the part that we made and in the fillet I'll select the fillet weld IPT inventor part and I can click this and put it anywhere on the screen but I want it placed at the origin so I'm going to right click and I'm going to tell place that part grounded at the origin then hit escape all right so now we see some welding tools over here and then up across here now in SolidWorks it was down across here in Inventor up, up here so I'll click on weld and I'm going to tell it I want to put a weld on here so I'll do a weld bead we're going to do a fillet weld and I will set my size 0.25 for face one I'll select this face and then for face two I will select this side and so we see it previews that fillet bead and I'll also select this side well, one thing I forgot to show you in SolidWorks is setting the contour to either be flat or convex or concave for that weld bead. I will also click here to create a weld symbol. Now in Inventor I have to put in the symbol so it's not going to create it for me automatically and so I'll put in the 0.25 here and then I'll come up here and click and we see our choice of symbols and I'm also going to put up the 0.25 up here and we see that here is our symbol I'm trying to drag this symbol out so the same side and the other side for that fillet weld and just like we did in SolidWorks if we wanted to edit a fill a fillet bead we would drill down find that fillet bead and right click we could say edit feature and so if I had done these one at a time the way that I did in SolidWorks I would just have to edit that and add the second weld bead on the other side just like I did in SolidWorks. So that's the beginning fillet weld in SolidWorks and in Autodesk Inventor. So we saw how similar those were. The big difference was in Inventor we had to load this into an assembly. In SolidWorks we had to load that physical fillet weld bead tool. Whenever I finish my weld bead, and this is one that's often forgotten by beginners, is I want to get out of the welding environment. So I need to click return here to get out of the welding environment environment and I'll save this. I'll give it a name. The extension will be IAM for an assembly where it was IPT for a part. I'll tell it to save everything. And so that completes the first most basic lab in weldments.